Hi, in this lesson, we'll take a deep dive into string objects. Let's get started. Now that we've learned a bit more about methods and objects, we are going to revisit the first objects that we learned to use, strings. When the data type starts with a capital letter, this indicates that it is a reference data type. Since strings are objects, we can actually write them with an official constructor as well. While both of these create string objects, there are subtle differences between them that we will discuss in the next lesson. Since strings are objects, they also have a set of methods that are associated with them. Here are a couple of examples of methods that the string class has. It's important to note that string methods do not alter existing strings, but actually create new ones. If we assign name dot to uppercase to a new variable, that variable will be assigned to the result of the to uppercase method, which is an uppercase version of the string variable name. This is because strings are considered to be immutable. This means that once a string object is created, it cannot be changed or manipulated. The only way to change a string value is to reassign the variable with a different string value. In this case, we've reassigned name to be equal to Bob. The next time that name is printed, the value expressed will be Bob instead of Carol. Another important feature of strings is that we can concatenate strings together. Concatenation is the process of adding two string values together. Here we've created a new variable full name that holds the value of first name plus the value of last name. When we print it, we can see that full name holds both values put together. We write concatenations by using the plus sign. If you notice in this example, the output is missing a space between Carol and the dog. When we concatenate, it's important to note where the spaces are in the program, as that affects what the output looks like. If we want the output of full name to be Carol space the dog, we need to include a space at the beginning of last name so that the space character is added to full name as well. Alternatively, we can add a space to the end of Carol and that will have the same effect. Just as we could use shortcuts to add primitive values, we can use the plus equals shortcut to assign string objects additional values. Instead of having to write first name equals first name plus something, we can just write first name plus equals something, which will add something to the end of first name. We can also concatenate primitive values with string objects. When a primitive value is concatenated with a string object, the program automatically converts the primitive value to a string object so that it can be used in the program. This is called implicit conversion. Implicit conversion can be tricky, as data types operate a little differently than we might initially expect. Let's take this problem for instance. What do you expect the answer to be? Although the answer we're looking for is 30, implicit conversion changes the int age into a string type, which concatenates the value of 10 to the end of 20 instead of adding the values together. If we want this problem to work, we need to put the equation within parentheses. This ensures that the addition occurs before the values are converted to the type string to be printed. An interesting dilemma that exists with strings is that some characters cannot be used directly because they already hold a different meaning in Java. Take quotes, for example. Those are used to indicate what characters and values should be included in a string. So what if we want to add quotes in our string objects? If we want to write quotes directly into our program, that causes an error. When we add quotes directly into our strings, Java interprets them as actual string values. In this case, the program is reading and he said as a single string and quotation marks as another. Thank you is not enclosed in a string, which throws an error because the compiler assumes that thank you is a variable name and not a string value. We can avoid this confusion by using a nifty character sequence. By writing backslash quote, we can indicate to Java that we want to include the quotation character in our string. Here we include two backslash quote values in our string so that when printed, thank you is surrounded by quotes. Backslash quote is considered an escape sequence. 
Escape sequences are a series of characters that allow us to include special characters and actions in our string objects. This table includes a couple of helpful escape sequences that we're going to use throughout the course. All escape sequences start with a backslash and are followed by another character, which indicates exactly what should be included in the string object. Now that you've learned about string methods and concatenation, let's get some practice using them in the editor.